Hey, what's going on guys? So Ed and Emily from Snake Discovery, who we all know and love, but I bet you didn't know that they actually run a couple of expos here in Minnesota. They have bird expos, they have reptile expos, and they have exotic pet expos. And here in Hastings, Minnesota, they put on the Wings, Tails, and Scales Exotic Pet Expo. So I'm heading in there and I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the Wings, Tails, and Scales Exotic Pet Expo. And I'm gonna get you guys up close and personal with some of the most amazing birds, mammals, and reptiles that you guys have ever seen. This place is so crowded. It's only been open for an hour so far. Man, you could even say that this place is a zoo. Sorry, sorry, so sorry, sorry. So as soon as you walk into this expo, you'll see that it's separated into sections. There's the bird section, there's the mammal section, there's the arachnid section and the invert section, and over there is the reptile section. So we're gonna see this entire expo, but we're gonna start right here with the birds. All right, so this is Jody. You are working this table with your dad over here, and you guys are from Parrot Adventures. Yeah. And where are you guys located? We are in Wisconsin. In near Wisconsin. Yes. Okay, near Milwaukee. Yeah. So you traveled all the way from Milwaukee with all these birds today? Yes, we did. Wow, all right. And he looks very excited to be here. Who's this? This is Morgan. He is a blue and gold macaw. And he is 22 years old. 22 years old? He's older than you are. Yes, he is. Wow. And how long have you guys had him? We've had him since November. He is from our neighbor who passed away. Gotcha. And so he's kind of a rescue. And we've been training him to get used to coming into the shows. And so this is kind of his life now. And he's our family parrot now. And so for people that want to just start getting into birds, getting into parrots, what would you suggest is a really good starter bird or a starter parrot? The one I would start with are our cockatiels. They are an amazing first bird. They are the all-American bird, I would Absolutely. consider. Absolutely. You can take them home. They're friendly. They're not going to pick one person. They're amazing. So a lot of people get a parakeet as their first ah! bird. Is that, what would you suggest? A parakeet or a cockatiel for their first bird? I would honestly suggest a cockatiel as the first bird. Parakeets, they can be pinchy occasionally, and they sometimes like to test themselves, right. in my opinion. So I would say a cockatiel. They're just sweet, they're loving, they want to be with you all the time, and they're larger too. Yep. So I would go with a cockatiel. Well, a cockatiel was my first bird. I don't think I've ever had a parakeet, but I know I've had cockatiels. These are our baby green cheek conures. They are about four to five weeks old. They are very young still, but they are being hand-fed here at the show, and it's good education for everyone here because they get to see the process of feeding all these babies as well. section over here we're gonna head over here and see some of the really amazing mammals that are at this expo so this is Emily from skis exotics you're up in Brainerd right yep. all right and these are the cutest animals here at this expo what do we got here they're African blackback jackals they are an African coyote basically they are one of the oldest breeds of dogs here in um, in the world their parents were imported from Africa and they are their first litter here, so they are brand new into the U.S. It helps to keep their lines really healthy, really diverse. Um, and yeah, they're eight weeks old today. This is their first time out in the public. Wow. We, we raise them as puppies and we just love them. We treat them like they're our pets and that's exactly what they are. Now, somebody's gonna watch this and they are going to wanna get one of these. Mm -hmm. Are these a pet for everyone? They're not. They're not a pet to everyone. We do not sell them to the public. 
Um, they only go to people that are licensed. You need to have special know-how. You need to have special care, special ve special veterinarian. There's a lot of things that go into these guys rather than just a dog, just a typical dog. Um, they need to have all the know-how and all the knowledge. There you go. So it's not like they're just buying an exotic dog and thinking no. that they're going to raise it and Correct. care for it like a dog. It doesn't work that way. It does not. Nope. And you will not see these for sale to the public. They are not going to be for sale to the public just because that's not what they are. They're very special. They have so many needs that the typical person cannot do. What are some of their special needs? They are, they require special foods um, and then like those special vitamins and minerals. They're just like on private sites that you can get them and special private people make them. Um, they need large outdoor enclosures as they're adults. They are very timid, natured as animals, so they cannot be stressed out. They cannot have a ton of visitors. They are very family orientated. They need that special bond. They cannot be passed around. They need to have a family forever. Um, even in the wild, they are monogamous, so they mate for life. These guys are just brother and sister, um, but they need to have that special connection for life and they cannot be passed around. And now how big will these guys get? They get about 20 to 25 pounds. Um, they're really lean. They're kind of lanky animals. They're small. They're smaller than your average coyote. Um, they're a lot more lean and lanky than a native red fox here. Their coats are not quite as thick. They cannot be left out in the winter time here in Minnesota. Like I said, they need special enclosures um, or special homes for them if, if they're in the house and visit in the house as well. We raise them in the house as pups and that's really the best for them. So speaking of amazing mammals here, this is Heather and who is this? This is Boother. This is Bluther. Where did Bluther get his name from? Uh, the Netherlands. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. And so now this is a werewolf cat. Yes, it is a Lycoy. So they're known as the original um, werewolf, werewolf cats. And they have the little like fingers, almost like a sphinx. Look at that. That is amazing. So this is kind of like a hairless cat with some hair. Yes, but um, they're born fully coated and then at about two weeks they start to molt and at around six weeks sometimes they're completely bald. Really? Yes. So now how old is this cat? He is one. One, and so he still has a lot of hair for a one-year-old. Well, at so if you look here at these photos, yeah. this is a 12-week-old. So I see. at six weeks they're almost totally bald and then by 12 weeks they wolf out and I they're gotcha. um, in their wolfy coat they get rowan which is kind of this white in the fur right and so it makes them look coarse but they're very soft wow and then, right, i gotta feel how soft they oh my god they are really soft yeah hi sweetie look at you and they only have a top coat, so they don't have an undercoat like a regular cat. Gotcha. Yeah. And now, how long have you been working with these cats? A uh, little over three years. A little over three years. Yep. So now, we all know tabbies, we all know fill-in-the-blank, this type of cat. Not a lot of people are familiar with werewolf cats. Yes. So how rare a gene is this in cats? Um, it's very rare. When I started, I was told I think it was closer to four years ago, and I was told that there was about 12 breeders in the world, which I'm in not the sure. world. In the world. Now there's more, but at that wow. time there were not a whole lot. So it's, um, I believe the breed is about 12 years old. So it's a relatively new breed. Oh, wow. So I don't feel so bad now that I've never heard of a werewolf cat, but. Yes. That is an amazing cat. So, Look at how beautiful that is. Yeah, it comes, it actually is a, um, a natural mutation that developed out of a black feral cat. Really? Yep. I had one that I had flown down to North Carolina and found her. And um, she didn't even test with the gene, but all of her kittens have produced likewise. So, so this is a recessive gene. Yes. Interesting. So, yeah, it's, um, if I was to breed him with a regular domestic, it would carry the gene, but all the kittens would look like a normal domestic. Exactly. Yep. Wow, what an amazing cat.
All right, so leaving the amazing mammals over there, we're getting to my favorite part of this expo, and that is the reptiles. Kyle, my man. What's up? How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. How's the expo going for you? Good. 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 So you've got some really cool looking ball pythons here, especially <laughs> this guy. That one's the best one, right? That's the best one right there. And why is that the best one? Uh, the mom mine came from you. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why. Oh, that's awesome. Are you having a good show? Great show. Awesome. awesome. It's good to come to local shows and see people. Absolutely. <laughs> and look at this. You got a pastel lesser bongo over here. First one of the year and it's still here. Well, and for that price, that shouldn't still be here. I agree. Right. I agree. But look at this. Pastel calico, possible orange dream head pied. That is an amazing snake. Dead, I think people would be like, that's on stream. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. All right, man. Well, good seeing you. You too. Glad that snake is working out for you. Yes. We're going to go see some more reptiles over here. All right, Liam Finnegan, you have the best bearded dragons at this expo. Thank you. And a lot of other expos. We are definitely going to be filming for reptile adventures pretty soon here. So. Can't wait. Yes. What is the coolest bearded dragon that you have here at the show? At the show? I would say, because I don't have anything extra special with me today. I sold everything pretty much at the last couple of shows. Which is a good problem to have. It very much is. But well, look at these little guys. I would say it's probably this little girl right here. Beautiful leatherback. The genetic striping on her is a little bit different than what I normally see from every other genetic stripe. You can kind of see on the genetic stripes all these little dots that go throughout it. So it adds just a little bit of uniqueness to the stripes. So she's the more special one that I would say that I have here. Always a pleasure to see you at these expos, man. You really do have some amazing bearded dragons. Thank you. Look out for our episode on reptile adventures coming up soon. You guys are going to love it. Right on. So I have to ask, yeah. what are human grade quail eggs? So these are ones that we collected in the past week, and these ones are ones that have been collected um, as far as two weeks ago. Okay. So we just sell the most recent ones that are more likely to contain all the nutrients and everything. So these are for people to eat? Yeah, yeah you, can eat you can eat them. I you see. Can eat them, your dogs. And that's what human grade means is that yeah. they're food. Yeah. I gotcha. I eat them all the time. Well, I know that I like eggs, and I would have to eat that whole thing just to make an omelet. So. You can take one and eat it raw if you want. We've done it before. Yeah, I've done it actually. Show me. I'm, not I'm putting you on the spot. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay. Eat a human. Gra oh man, you spurred it all over. <laughs> all right, there. I had there to go. ask, and I paid the price. Oh, <laughs> the yolk's on me. <laughs> so right over here in this corner of the expo are all the tarantulas and arachnids. All right, so here at One Love Tarantulas, this is Tom. How long have you been working with tarantulas? Um, I've been working with tarantulas for about three years. Three years. And are you local here in Minnesota? I am. You are? Okay. Yep. And so you've got a bunch of slings here, a bunch of slings here, a bunch of slings here. You got some bigger, cooler ones here. What is the coolest tarantula that you got? Uh, the coolest tarantula I got right now here is probably going to be the the avicularia, the Peru purple. And now they're going to get more colorful as they mature. Yes, correct? as they grow, they'll get more and more color, and when they mature, they'll be uh, kind of a lighter purple. Um, and I believe they have a yellow bands that go around their legs as well. That is going to be a really good looking arachnid in a year or so. I also have several species of true spiders as well. Um, what do we got? The, my favorite is the fishing spider. Oh yeah, those are so cool. Um, the fishing spiders will actually, they'll catch prey right out of a, a deli cup. Uh, you can put like minnows in there, like rosies from the pet store, or guppies, and, and they'll stock them out and they'll, they'll pull them right out. We got a, the poker bees, it's a common favorite. These guys are really slow growing. They're, they're very easy to care for. They make a really good uh, display tarantula. 
because when they, they get older, they tend to stay out in the open a little more. Right. Very yeah. friendly, docile. And so what is the care of these guys? Uh, the care of these guys is really simple. Um, they don't like very large areas. Um, you just kind of get them in a different size enclosure as they grow. You feed them once, maybe twice a week. You know, a cricket here, a cricket there. Give them a little water dish, a little bit of water to keep them saturated right, and happy. Right. So they're pretty easy to care for. Most species of tarantulas are pretty easy to care for. Absolutely. And you know, the popularity of arachnids keeps growing and growing every year. It is completely blown up over these last couple of years. It certainly it's... has. So this is Lydia, and you and I met years ago. And now, you have your own table at your very first expo. Look at this. All right, so what are you working with here? I like invertebrates. I kind of like small pets that are easy to maintain, younger children, first time pet adults living in apartments. Jumping spiders are awesome. Tailless with scorpions are awesome. Um, I do a lot of the cage accessories. I hand make these guys. I have the little jumping in spider enclosures. Okay, hang on a second. We got to see this because you've designed these enclosures yep. just for jumping spiders. Yep. You've got a little water dish yep. in there. I love the little mushrooms up there. Yep. Now, are you making all this stuff yep, that goes in here? Yep, handmade. So you're, ma you're hand making all of this yep. stuff just for jumping yep. spider enclosures. And I've got an Etsy as well. Not much on it right now because I don't want to double sell with stuff being at the yep, yep. expo. But yeah. But first, look at these. Yeah. these they're all little tiny little guys and they're magnetic. So you put one magnet on one side, one magnet on the other, and then you kind of get to design your, your enclosure for them. I've got seashell ones. I've got crystals, little milk bottles, stairs. Very passionate about making fun environments for the animals that we bring into our lives. If you aren't at this expo and you want some of this cool stuff that Lydia does, go to her Etsy store right here. There's one of the jumping spiders that jumped off onto this enclosure. So the bolts are over here. These are actually regals. Um, so they'll get a little bit bigger, you know, about this big. And they're really exciting. They just have the best personalities and they're gentle. They don't bite. If you're scared of tarantulas, it's a great intermediate, you know, introduction to the hobby. That is great. The only problem with jumping spiders is that they jump. jump. This is awesome. Congratulations on getting a table at your first expo. You've you have come much. a long way and I this is awesome to see. You have a good one. I appreciate you. Awesome. Hello, Emily. Hey, Dave. So, this is your expo. It is an amazing expo. Thank you. And you've been doing this for like years. Yeah, about a decade now. We've about been running a shows. Decade. <laughs> So with everything that you've got going on with the pet shop, the zoo, your YouTube channel, you still have time to put on these expos, which is amazing. We it's all because of her amazing husband yes, right here. That's, we'll go with that. <laughs> no, he's been supportive throughout the entire time. We actually started out the shows together, so he actually has a good point there. <laughs> well, we love Ed, no matter if you were just like standing behind the table being eye candy or actually, right. you know, put this all together too. Fan of white behind the there you go. There stuff. you go. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> no, this is this is great, guys. And uh, I, I'm I'm gonna be vending this one next time. We'd love to see you vend here. Yeah. You've been a vendor at our shows in the past. But just the reptile ones. Oh yep, yep, that's true. So you I will should, be back. This that would be cool. <laughs> is amazingly awesome. I saw some of the coolest stuff here. Stuff I didn't even know existed. This is the first time we've had a few species here, like the black-backed jackals. Those were Never amazing. Had those here, and those are here just for educational purposes, of course. Right. But we've had some really neat animals here today, and it's been a great turnout too. I think it's a combination of the warmer weather and people just wanting to get out of the house. We have a huge turnout in our spring events, so this is a really fun one. Warmer weather being the 21 degrees it is outside. It's warm Which, compared to what we've had. I was going to say, for Minnesota, that's warm. That's we love tropical. It. All right, this is an awesome expo, Emily. I had a blast here. So this is a small but really amazing expo, and if you are in the upper Midwest area and want to go to a really awesome exotic pet expo, consider the Wings, Tails, and Scales Expo. It really is a ton of fun, and there's something here for everyone. So real quick, I just want to thank each one of my Patreon supporters. It's with your support that these channels, this one, the Reptile channel, all my channels can exist. So thank you so much for all your support. If you'd like to become a Patreon, that link is in the description below. So guys, there's <laughs> lots more animal adventures coming up. So until the next animal adventure, love the planet, feed your animal obsession, and rattle on.